All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Barfus. I'm going to be one of the peer mentors uh, presenting for Explore SDSU for the College of Sciences right now. Uh, we really wanted to present to you in person, but unfortunately, with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that can't really happen. Uh, so we're going to have this video recorded as if you were here at Explore SDSU with us. And then in a few weeks, we'll also be presenting live and, have a, and having a Q&A feature uh, session that's going to be 30 minutes after we do this presentation as well. Uh, so feel free to just go ahead and tune into that. I believe that's going to be on April 18th, and our session is going to go ahead and be at 12 p.m. So just go ahead and look on the College of Sciences uh, web page to go ahead and find that Zoom link, uh, and there's going to be more information to come with that. Uh, but to give you a quick introduction of who I am, uh, so I already said my name, but I'm in my fourth and final year here at SDSU. So, uh, so yes, I was impacted quite a bit by the COVID-19 pandemic as my graduation was postponed. A lot of my experiences uh, just suddenly came to an end. So I was fairly involved on campus and I did a lot of my last without even knowing it. Uh, so that was very unfortunate, but it does happen. I work various on-campus jobs uh, and one does include working in the College of Sciences Student Success Center as a peer mentor. I've also tutored on campus in the Math and Stats Learning Center and done a variety of things. I've been very involved on campus too. So I'm also an SDSU ambassador. So I'm an official student representative, tour guide and orientation leader. Uh, and I'm also originally from Minnesota, but I moved to Orange County about five and a half ago. That's enough about me, but if Matt wanted to go ahead and give an introduction of who he is. Hey everyone, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, like Josh said, we wish that we could do this in person, but here we are. So um, my name is Matthew Leong. I am a graduating senior. Um, my, major's in, my major is microbiology, and like Josh, I work as a peer mentor at at the College of Sciences Student Success Center. I also have a, um, a myriad of involvements here on campus at SDSU. Um, also with Josh as an SDSU ambassador and a lot of my organizations really focus around service and leadership. And I've also worked in a couple of different um, research labs here on campus. So I'll be talking a little bit about that later in this presentation, but that's just a little bit about me. And Sam, you wanna do a little introduction of yourself as well? Yeah, thanks. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sam. I'm in my third year at SDSU. I'm a psychology major and just like Matt and Josh, I work in the College of Sciences Student Success Center and just also like the two of them, I am an SDSU ambassador. Also heavily involved on campus, not so much on on-campus jobs, but more in student orgs and life, student life and leadership and things like that. I also had the chance to study abroad this past summer, so I will be talking about some study abroad opportunities a little bit later on in the presentation, but that's a little bit about me. You're muted, Josh. Oh, uh, I was muted. So you just probably just saw my mouth moving quite a bit, uh, but I did forget to mention my major. So I'm actually a double major in statistics and economics. And for statistics, I have an emphasis in actuarial sciences. And then I do also have an honors minor in interdisciplinary studies and Matt and Sam both have the same minor as well. All right, so this first slide is really just gonna give you an overview of what the presentation is gonna be talking about. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about education. So, so that is something that we do value here at SDSU, especially in the College of Sciences, research, studying abroad, advising, student involvement, and then awards, honors, and accolades that the College of Sciences has received. Uh, so to go ahead and start it off, I'll be talking about education. Uh, so within the College of Sciences, we do have a variety of majors and minors offered. We have eight different majors offered. Uh, there are different emphases associated with some of the majors uh, and then different kind of titles. So for example, we have mathematics and statistics, both as majors, uh, but they're both going to be located under the same department. So it's going to be the Department of Mathematics and Statistics right there. Uh, and then within statistics, we do have various emphases such as an emphasis in actuarial sciences, an emphasis in data science. Uh, within mathematics, we do have a BA degree that you can get, also a BS degree. Uh, so you will notice that with the College of Sciences, uh, there's going to be several majors that offer a BA or BS. Uh, so typically, if you're receiving a Bachelor of Arts uh, in Liberal Arts right there, uh, what does happen with that is there are going to be less upper division uh, major units required uh, because you do have a language requirement. Uh, so with that language requirement, you would need to take up to the third semester of a foreign language. Uh, so due to those unit requirements right there, that would decrease the amount of units that you do have to take for the upper division major. Uh, you, you do see a list of the different majors and minors that we have within the College of Sciences right there. Uh, so you can major in astronomy, biology, chemistry, computer science, environmental science, geological sciences, mathematics, physics, psychology, statistics. So all those are different majors, uh, but some of them are going to be grouped under the same department. So for example, environmental sciences and ge geological sciences are both going to be grouped up together. 
And for all of those majors right there, you can also pick up a minor. Uh, but something that's super unique within the College of Sciences is we do also have various certificates available for students to get. Uh, so a lot of the time, you may want to get a certificate, uh, just kind of prove your certification in an area. Uh, and pardon me if I am talking rather fast. Uh, I do talk rather fast at times just because I have so much information. Uh, so hopefully it's not too fast as you're watching me. You can always watch that 0.8 times speed, whatever works for you. Uh, but as far as certificates go, uh, we do have a biotechnology certificate that people can pick up, a certificate in regulatory affairs, residency training in radiation therapy physics, professional computational science, intellectual property and regulatory affairs, uh, geographic information science. So all great certificates. So in addition to having a major and or minor, uh, you can also pick up certificates in various areas such as that. And you if you refer to our general catalog, you can see a complete list of all of those. Uh, so if you go to sdsu.edu uh, forward slash catalog, uh, you will actually see all the different majors and minors within the College of Sciences as well as certificates offered. And then continuing on education, uh, you might be wondering what some of our class sizes look like. So they really do vary. Uh, we do have some larger lectures. So for example, pretty much every single major in the College of Sciences, uh, except two, I'd have to take calculus. Uh, so for that, uh, it would be actually every single major except one, uh, but biology takes calculus for life sciences, but all the other majors take calculus one. Uh, so with that, uh, what does happen is we do have a large lecture for calculus, for example. So there may be up to 300 students in that large lecture, uh, but there's gonna be a breakout section led by a teaching assistant, which will have up to 25 students in that class. So those more difficult questions will be gone through during that breakout session. Every single professor is gonna go ahead and have office hours as well. Uh, so that's a very unique opportunity for students to have a one-on-one -on -one experience to be talking to your professor. Uh, so right now our office hours are actually held on Zoom, uh, which is super cool that professors are able to accommodate that and still be able to communicate with us in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Uh, the class styles do really vary too. So uh, we do have labs on campus. So if you're in the College of Sciences, uh, you're not really gonna get around it. You are gonna be taking a lab at some point. It's also a general education department. Uh, so as far as labs go, that's when you're gonna be doing the experimental aspects of different classes. So a lot of different biology that are gonna be associated with the classes that you're taking, that you are taking. And then we have exams. Uh, so if you are an admitted freshman to SDSU, uh, you are gonna to wanna to keep your eye out for these different placement exams. So the Alex, the yeah, mathematics placement assessment that you take, and that decide which math class you start at. Uh, so if you did take AP calculus and you received a three, four, or five, you don't really have to worry about the Alex. Uh, but if you're any major except psychology, you are gonna be wanting to take the mathematics placement assessment known as the Alex. Uh, some more information can be found uh, about that online at sdsu.edu forward slash testing services. Uh, so you can go and visit there if you do have any testing questions. And then uh, if you're a biology, chemistry major, pretty much any major within the College of Sciences, except for mathematics, statistics, or psychology, you're gonna wanna take the chemistry placement exam. That'll determine your placement in chemistry. Uh, so whether or not you're gonna be placed at a higher level or lower level, you will wanna go ahead and take that exam. And then in order to ensure that you are successful in your classes, we have free tutoring within the College of Sciences. Uh, so the, this tutoring is actually offered to all students here at SDSU. Uh, but since I did mention that you'll be taking some math and statistics courses, uh, we have the Mathematics and Statistics Learning Center, which, which provides free tutoring in mathematics and statistics. And it's actually starting to become more of a STEM learning center uh, as they are now offering free tutoring in, in physics at this time. And they're really trying to get more tutors to offer a variety of classes in the College of Sciences. And then last but not least right there, we have the Chemistry Tutoring Lounge. So the Chemistry Tutoring Lounge is free tutoring for students in chemistry uh, located in, in the Geological Mathematics and Computer Science building. All right, and then Matt, Matt's gonna go ahead and be talking about research now. So go ahead and take it away, Matt. Thanks, Josh. Okay, so research. Research is um, often a very common question that we get from students in the College of Sciences. And so one of the biggest questions, there are three questions I think it's, it's appropriate to go through the three questions and tell you about, um, about the answers. So the first one is how to find it. So how to find it. Um, there's almost every single department has their own website and the way you can do it is you can actually search different faculty and with most of the faculty that are listed, they have their research interests and if they are full professors or professors on the tenure track, they are probably going to be doing some sort of research. I mean, all departments on within the College of Sciences are doing research in some way, shape or form. And I think it's such an incredible opportunity to get involved, to actually work um, alongside some really distinguished professors who have done some really cool things. So for example, just wanted to spotlight Dr. Gu from um, the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. She's working on um, trying to create, use, use um, 
and she's in the department of inorganic chemistry where she basically is taking um, hydrogen fuel and trying to make that as a sustainable um, like energy source for our society, which is pretty cool. So that's just one of the many things that is being done in this one specific department. But um, and research can be, then I'll move on to the second question is who to ask. So uh, Nina Barr is one of the, res um, is a great resource in the College of Sciences to ask. Also professors who are listed, um, all you can actually go to the SDSU campus directory and find all of their emails, their SDSU emails um, to like, if you go to SDSU campus directory and you look up a specific professor by last name, you can find their email. Also Dr. Martin, the Assistant Dean of Student Affairs um, for the College of Sciences is a great resource to ask about how to get involved with research. And then final question is when to ask. So if you're an incoming freshman, I think there's really no, um, there's no need to wait. If you want to get involved in research, I would say ask as soon as possible. If you're a transfer student, um, I would ask at the same time, right when you get to campus, if you have any sort of interest in getting involved in research, what, how do you get involved essentially? Um, essentially most of, of the research labs that you might be joining might um, have a principal investigator, which is a PI or the professor who's leading the lab and they might have a couple of graduate assistants, um, maybe PhD or master students and then some undergraduate assistants. So you might start your time either working as, an, as a volunteer or then you might transition to actually being a full member of the lab, whether you're, where you're con conducting projects or um, helping graduate students write their thesis or helping them do projects in pursuit of their thesis. And then if you're wondering, well, okay, well, I'm just helping someone out. What about my own projects? Well, so a lot of students, especially if they catch the research bug early and they want to get involved, they have the opportunity in some cases with to actually get sometimes research funding and grants to do a undergraduate thesis where they're able to actually conduct a semester long experiment or maybe a year long experiment or um, a variety of projects and present them at the student research symposium, which is an incredible event that we have every single year where students from all disciplines from all across the campus get to get in front of an academic audience and actually present their research. Some of them are doing posters where they create full on posters. That's a little picture you see there at the bottom where students are explaining their posters to different members of the community and um, people in academia, or you can actually do full on presentations in front of people where you get to present your research and your findings, and then people will give, ask you questions and maybe give you more ideas to then present, um, pursue further in that research topic. So that's basically the kind of overarching view of research. Like I said, there, um, there's no like timetable in this. You, you just want to try to get involved as soon as possible whenever you feel the urge to get involved. And there are a variety of topics and projects to get involved with, especially with the incredible faculty we have here on this campus. So that's just a little bit about research. And then I think, is it Sam? Sam's next. All right, Sam, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So I'm going to talk about studying abroad. So, a great resource for College of Sciences students, we have our own international coordinator. Her name is Marie Crawford, and you can get in contact with her, and she will really help you from step one to get you abroad. Whether you want to go on a faculty-led program, an independent kind of student exchange program, a semester at sea, semester long, two weeks, doesn't matter. She's the way to get started. So I went to her when I was looking at studying abroad. Another great tool for students, we have an online database for all of our studying abroad courses that we offer abroad. It's called Aztecs Abroad. That's how I found my program. So students can log in, search through the database, whether by class type, by location, by term, whether during the summer, break, or fall or spring semester you can find anything that you're looking for. And then of course, there are scholarship opportunities. So Marie Crawford, if you get in contact with her, she will actually send you an email that is full of all these scholarships that you can apply for. She sent me, I think, 20 <laughs> when I was looking to study abroad. And then also through SGSU, just as a whole university, we do also offer scholarships for any student that is looking to study abroad. So that is a resource as well. Within the College of Sciences, there's only one major that requires students to study abroad in order to graduate, and that would be environmental science. For the rest of our majors, it's encouraged that students study abroad in order to gain like an international perspective, but environmental science students are required in order to graduate. That's just a little bit about study abroad. 
All right, so it's back to me. Uh, this next slide is going to be talking about advising. So here at SDSU, it's rather unique because we have a dual model for advising. Uh, and dual typically means two. Uh, at SDSU, it's rather unique because it really means many. Uh, so we have two kind of main advising areas offered here at SDSU. Uh, we have major advisors for you. Uh, so they're going to be the ones who more closely advise you as far as picking your upper division major courses. If you have any questions about changing to a major or things of that nature, uh, they'll be the ones to go ahead and work with you. And then we also have general education advising. So we do have the Office of Advising and Evaluations. Uh, so if you have any questions about your requirements to graduate, uh, they're going to be the ones to go ahead and answer those questions. Uh, and general education is a collective full. So when you have general education questions, you'll direct them over there. And then when you have questions pertaining to your major, you'll want to go see your major advisor. It's really good to build a relationship with both of those areas on campus uh, as you, it's better to ask questions, uh, regardless if you think it was a stupid question, uh, because ultimately the stupid question is one that you don't ask. So you will just want to go ahead and keep that in mind. Uh, but then a lot of students in the College of Sciences may be on a pre-medical track, pre-dental, pre-optometry, pre-pharmacy, pre-physician assistant, pre-veterinary. If you're on any of those tracks, uh, here at SDSU, we don't have any majors uh, such as that, but we have a health professions advising office. So if you decide that you want to go in any of those tracks, there's not a major that you have to be to go into any of those fields. You have to hit proper prerequisites. Uh, so a lot of students may decide later on, you know what, I really want to go to medical school, but I don't want to completely change my major because I've been working really hard for the past two or three years, and I also want to study in this area. Uh, so because of that, people have the option uh, to go ahead and meet with the Health Professional Advising Office, and they'll let you know the correct courses to take. Uh, they'll teach you how to study for the MCAT and other things of that nature, uh, things that students have used to historically be successful as they're trying to transition into medical school, medical school and things like that afterwards. Uh, so you'll see I have some nice fun pictures right there of students who are kind of going on pre-med track. Those aren't SDSU students, I just found it online. And then this next slide is all about the College of Science Student Success Center. Uh, so in our introduction, I had mentioned that we all work there. Uh, so through the College of Science Student Success Center, uh, you'll see that I posted some flyers right here. Uh, so we do offer peer advising. So this is another outlet for students to receive advising. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer advising can be rather calming at times to hear from a peer, somebody who has uh, most recently gone through kind of the same thing that you're going through right now. Uh, so that's why we're here. Uh, so that students can have that student on student contact right there. But in addition to that, we also do host a variety of workshops throughout the year. Uh, so we've currently been transitioning these workshops into, into hosting them via Zoom so the students can still be receiving our resources. And for every single workshop, we're create, we do create flyers. So we've done workshops on uh, ways for students to get involved on campus, ways for students to get involved with undergraduate research, and you'll see those flyers right there. Um, but in addition to peer advising, we also have professional advisors that work with us. So uh, we do have Rosan Ayala and Marisa Reynoso uh, that do also work closely with us. And for students uh, who need advising and maybe can't see their major advisor due to scheduling issues. We also have uh, professionally trained advisors who can meet with you as well. Uh, they can also uh, give you close advising as far as the College of Sciences is concerned. Uh, we have research advising. Uh, so we do have Nina Barr uh, that Matt had touched on earlier and she works out of the College of Sciences Student Success Center currently. Uh, depending on uh, when she graduates, we may have a different uh, research advisor that comes into play. Uh, we also have study abroad advising. So Maureen Crawford has regularly scheduled hours in the College of Science Student Success Center, which is really nice. Uh, we have workshops, I already touched on that. We have a semesterly donut planathon. So we're having a Zoomathon this semester uh, and people can eat their donuts at home. But typically each semester we have a donut planathon in which students can come into our office and receive free Krispy Kreme donuts and just get all of their advising needs done pretty much that day, which is super nice. Uh, it's also a nice study space. So if you're looking for a space on campus to study, we welcome all students to come in. Uh, and then we also have nice promotions such as free printing. When we first opened, all students could come in and receive free printing regardless if they were in the College of Sciences. It was a way to kind of increase our foot traffic. Uh, but now we do have a requirement that if students see us for one advising session, uh, which is ultimately just gonna benefit you, then we will give you free uh, printing for the entire semester uh, and so much more. We have a variety of other things that we do offer. Our location is GMCS 429. Uh, when you're a, college, a student in the College of Sciences, you become rather familiarized with GMCS. You'll probably have one to 10 to 20 classes in that building. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, it's also where a variety of the major advisors for the College of Sciences are located at. Uh, but we're gonna be on the fourth floor in room uh, 429 right there. And then if you want more information as far as where our services are and different things that we offer, you can visit uh, the link right there. So go ahead and take a screenshot of that. If you type in College of Science Student Success Center, we're gonna be the first thing that does come up. Uh, but that's gonna be it for advising. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back off to Matt so you can talk about ways to get involved on campus. Okay, thank you, Josh. So yeah, um, 
a big part of the student experience um, courses education, but another big part is high impact practices. And we've kind of been talking about that, you know, research, um, studying abroad, even working on campus or student involvement is another big one of them. So under associated students, which is kind of like the student government that we have here on campus, there are um, all seven colleges have their own student council. So um, the College of Sciences Student Council is under the associated students and they oversee the many different organizations within the College of Sciences. So um, I put a couple of the different organizations down here. This is just a handful. This is, there's definitely a long list of different organizations so for example, um, if you just look at the list, Active Mind, Psychology Club, Cyber Defense Team, American Medical Student Association, the Society of Statisticians and Actuaries, and there's so many more. So the whole thing about student involvement and when it comes to, especially, especially in the College of Sciences, is that there's pretty much a club or organization for pretty much every discipline, for every discipline and essentially a lot of students actually find within their specific interests academically that they can find a organization right here. So Josh, you go to the next slide. So that's just in the call to sciences. And that's really where like, if you have any academic interests, then that's even, that's a great way to get involved. And if you notice like on the slide before, they have Flying Samaritans, which is a great community service organization. Um, but now moving over to general student involvements, you have just so many ways to get involved. So um, associated students, like I was saying, that's a student government on our campus. Um, you also have fraternity and sorority life, community and service and philanthropy based organizations. And if you just take a look, there's, these are some of the of the many um, 350 plus recognized student organizations we have here on our campus. Um, I think that's one of the biggest ways to maximize the student experience is to get involved some way, shape or form with one maybe one, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 15 or 20, like Josh, Sam or myself, where we just kind of love getting involved with these different organizations. And um, we just felt that this is exactly what um, really amplifies the student experience. So um, this is just some of the list. Um, I actually did leave a link at the end um, for student life and leadership. We can actually browse um, that website, take a look at the different ways to get involved as well as to look at the entire list of the recognized student organizations with the contact information of the people who are associated with that organization, like a president or an advisor. So you can get in contact with them in case you have any questions about getting involved. But I know that's a lot of information and you're like, okay, well, how am I supposed to navigate this? When you, if you get to campus, if and when you get to campus, that first couple of weeks of each semester, we actually have the, um, the student um, organization expo where you essentially the in, probably like, I would say the major traffic points of our campus are completely covered in tents and tables set up with all of our different student organizations that are really just trying to give you more information so you can be more informed about which ones you would like to join. And so, they do that for both semesters and it's a great way, especially when you're on campus to take a look at those different organizations to see which one that you feel like you'd want to get involved with. So that's really going to be it about student involvement. And then I think I'm going to pass it back to Sam. Yeah, so I'm going to share some of the awards, honors, accolades that fall under the College of Sciences. So one of the big hitters is the College of Sciences at SGSU is the region's largest center for science education and research. So we're a pretty big school. So we have the biggest concentration of that education, of that research that Matt was talking about earlier. For our astronomy, our program is ranked number five in the entire state of California, which is a really big deal. Moving right along with astronomy, um, some of our astronomers are part of the NASA Kepler Space Program. They discovered five planets outside of our solar system, as well as planets that orbit two suns. So that's just a really cool accolade that they did, that they discovered. And then when it comes to funding for all that research that Matt was talking about, the National Science Foundation granted SDSU and specifically the College of Sciences $8 million for research funding. And then on top of that, the National Institutes of health granted 25.8 million for research funding. So the College of Sciences, as Matt said, does get involved in a lot of research and we are so grateful for all the funding that we have received that then goes into that research. All right, so I'm gonna be closing it out right here, uh, but just gonna give you an overview of what SDSU is looking like right now. SDSU is completely virtual. 
so with the COVID-19 pandemic, we did transition everything uh, to online. All of our professors are doing very well uh, with just everything happening very quickly. Uh, so classes are being taught synchronously and asynchronously. Uh, it really depends on the class uh, and what is actually covered in it. Uh, so it's really contingent upon uh, the format of the class. But uh, for that, all of our professors are transitioning very well. All offices have transitioned to online as well. So we're still receiving campus resources and still have things that out there to assist us with any needs that we may have. Uh, the past slides did cover high impact practices. Uh, so we really do push students to get involved here at SDSU. Uh, and to really highlight your SDSU experience, you want to do more than just going to class. So that's why we do have different slides covering how to get, uh, how to get involved on campus, uh, how to get involved with research, studying abroad, uh, because that's really going to make your SDSU experience that much more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you to attend new student orientation. So that's going to be taking place in July for first time freshmen and August for all transfer students. Uh, so new student orientation is going to go ahead and give you a quick overview of what student life is going to be looking like here at SDSU, your expectations as a, as a student. And then at the end of that day, you'll be receiving help to register uh, you in all of your classes. Uh, so you will want to go ahead and attend that. No need to worry about registering for any classes now or what you'd be taking uh, because we're going to have advisors there to assist you during that day. And then if you have any additional questions or anything covered in our presentation, I do have the email for the College of Science Student Success Center right there. So sciences.studentsuccess at sdsu.edu. Feel free to just go ahead and send us any questions that you may, ha may have in regards to the College of Sciences, and we'd be happy to answer that uh, for you. Uh, we're really excited to have you here at SDSU and really hope that you make your SDSU experience the best one yet. And then if you want more information on the College of Sciences, I've included their link right there. Uh, but thank you all, and go Aztecs. Take care of yourself and stay healthy. Thanks, everyone. Um, stop sharing. Stop recording.